This is going to be a great sister to sister show. People write us questions. And here's what you said. Is the Bible still applied to my life today? And how do we make sense of bad things happening in the world? I have no idea. I wonder what the sisters are going to say. Stay tuned. Welcome to Sister to Sister. We are so glad that you're here. Whether you're in your living room or your kitchen, wherever you are with a cup of coffee, welcome. We are five opinionated women of God. And you send us questions. We answer from our hearts and from a biblical point of view. And these questions are really, really good. Sometimes deep. This one, a little deep. Roxanne, I'm coming to you because you're my scripture girl. Uh, of all, we're all scripture girls. We are, yes. I'm finding all. But here's what I want to know. Does all of the Bible still apply to us today? Today, Good question, whoever wrote it. It is a very good question, mm -hmm. and I'm going to kind of put a parenthesis around it. You know, we, if we could look at the scriptures, Jesus said in John to the Pharisees, you think you have eternal life by following the scriptures, but they testify about me. Mm. My mother That's enlightened good. me to That's this good. scripture. If we look at scripture, where is Jesus in it? In the Old Testament. Yes. Too. Yeah. Noah's Ark. He's the Ark. Mm. You know, Joseph, he's the Redeemer. Mm. Moses, he's the one that takes us near the Promised Land. Joshua, he's the one that takes us into the Promised Land. Oh, yeah. If we look at the Old Testament, and I, I, I'm just really sorry about people that pan it, because it testifies of Christ. It, everything will lead us to Christ and to repentance. And what did um, uh, the first century Christians, the wise Bereans, checked the scriptures to see if what Paul and the apostles, the anointed by Jesus was true. They tested what God's anointed right. were saying right. and God called them wise. They didn't have the New Testament. They didn't have the whole Bible. That's right. They tested, they tested it with the Old Testament. So if we look wow. at it as a life giving instead of just a rule giving, we will see Christ. Oh, it's so good. good. Anybody else on that? I love this. Um, <laughs> 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to mm. teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now, I will say this. I feel like there's a lot of people that will use these like gotcha moments where they'll be like, they'll take this scripture out right, of the Old Testament right. and they'll be like, you are to stone your exactly. wife right. if gotcha. they, right. you know, That's bleed. Good. Good. On, and, and they'll, they'll take out these scriptures and it's the old law that Jesus came to replace. Right. And so there are scriptures that you have to take the context of that, that it's That's a right. historical context. Right. And so you That's cannot good. take scriptures out of that context. So there are some scriptures where Jesus replaced that oh, law. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot take that and say, well, you, are we supposed to stone people now because they bled or, or they walked over a line or they killed a, their neighbor's uh, animal? Yeah. No, or you're sacrifice. not. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, wow. you are not. Jesus came to replace that law. Right. But that scripture is useful so that we yeah. can see yes. we are not under that law any longer because of Jesus. Because of wow. grace. We're not right. under Amen. the law, we're under grace. I think maybe a question behind the question, um, you know, why would we be asking, does all of the Bible still apply to us today? Could it be because people are like, well, I want to believe this part, but right. not this oh, part. That's, that's exactly it. Um, yes. Well, this isn't part isn't going to work for me because I see it this way and I have my truth on this and, you know, my... Uh, uh, instructor said this and my professor said this and my family said this and it doesn't quite go with that so I'll do this part and not this part and it's like what are you doing? 
Like his word is the absolute truth. It is the only truth, you know, so help me God. And I, I just think that we better be careful that we don't veer off on our own truths and we better get back to the truth and all of it applies to oh today. Gosh, Flo, what do you think? You know, I, I agree with uh, Corey's perspective on it. I, I think that she kind of hit it um, well roundedly. Mm -hmm. uh, we must consider, some people call it an estrogesics, you've got to consider the culture, mm -hmm. the language, right. uh, the, the purpose, um, and uh, who the book is being written to at that time. Yes. As she has so well said, you know, we, we talk about, the scripture talks about adultery and how a person should drink a, a, a particular concoction and their legs sweat. So, so do you do that today? God replaced that with our elder brother, Jesus. You see the redemptive qualities, the redemptive message in the Bible does not change. Right. And so we have to be, you know, widely uh, aware of that. The only authority that can change God's word is God himself. And he did by giving us our elder brother, Jesus, right. who, as you said, replaced, because none of us could keep the laws. Do mm -hmm. people still commit adultery? Now here's where we go. Mm -hmm. Do people still commit adultery? Yes. Does that mean that it's okay to commit adultery now because you don't, you, you don't get stoned, you don't have to drink this concoction? No, and there are still um, repercussions yes. for, for, for doing that, right. that sin. Um, so I would say that, okay, the concoction that they talked about in the Old Testament, which no, I would say you, you, you don't do that. However, spiritually, if I don't allow the Holy Spirit to purge me, if I don't repent, I have drank in the concoction that will cause me to swell. It's called pride, it's called arrogance, right. it's called self, right. and it's called flesh. Right, oh boy, wow. that was a good question. And I, because so if you good. read Kings or Judges or, you know, open your Bible and you're like, ooh, mm -hmm. this is, ooh, crazy stuff. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. but read the whole thing and God loves you. Right. Okay, oh, <laughs> here's a really, Here's a good question. Read the whole thing and God loves you. There you Bye. Go. Well, Amy, uh, here's a good one. You wrote uh, it. Not you. You. <laughs> is God, how do you know God is real? Mm. Well, he told me he was. That's how I know. Amy. I know that God is real because I see him at mm -hmm. work and his hand on my life every day. I wake up in the morning and I have a fresh breath of air in my lungs and I open my eyes. I can see and I can walk to, you know, to the kitchen and make tea. But every day I go outside in the backyard and I feed the deer and I watch the mama deer and I watch the babies come and I watch sometimes the buck will come. I go and I feed the birds and I watch these beautiful, unique, different birds. I go to the fish, I feed the koi fish and it brings me joy and the goldfish and the koi and, the, and I watch how they reproduce and act and follow. And then I go to a hydrangea plant. Every thing, everywhere you go just screams, God is here, God is good, God made me, he created me, and it's for your pleasure Ooh, and your enjoyment. Oh, I love it. Wow. Scripture. Wow, well, I gotta say this. I, I just love that. God is in creation and all creation declares his glory, That's the right. scripture That's says. Right. And she's inspiring. I just wanna hear her in the morning <laughs> when I get up with the smug on my face. I got to call Amy, I think. Get some iced tea. That's yeah. Oh, iced tea. Yeah. Okay. I drink a cup of warm coffee. But anyway, historically, I have to say this about Jesus. You know, what's his name? Emmanuel, God with, with us. us. That's right. He's the only God that came in flesh as mm, a baby, right. sacrificed himself, did no sin in his life mm -hmm. and rose from the dead. So historically, Emmanuel, God was with us, witnessed by thousands of people, five, four or 500 saw him ascend into heaven. Witnesses, as a lawyer, there were a lot of witnesses <laughs> that gave testimony and their gospels. So, but personally, my life transformed. Mm -hmm. I was, I, would, I guess you call religious. I love the Lord, I went to church, That's I went really to Sunday awesome. school. I had a reverence mm -hmm. for God. I'm yeah. Armenian. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, baptized Armenian Orthodox, went to Presbyterian church. I had a love for, I had a reverence. When I realized that I needed a savior, 
I had a relationship. Right. I wanted to read the word. The scripture came alive. You love the whole world? You know, the, the scriptures came mm. open to me that right. I couldn't do on my own. It was a spiritual experience that only the Holy Spirit That's could right. do. And this, this next question piggybacks right on that. Let it's, me just dovetail off of that for a moment because I think she hit it so well because we sometimes we can answer a question from the perspective of not in our BC days. And there was a time that I can say for me, I didn't know God was real. As you said, you grow up in church and you were taught that um, God exists. But it, for me, um, and I think for a lot of people, you don't know it until you actually have that encounter with him. Mm. And it's okay because we have some people that are listening that maybe do have that question and uh, feel ostracized perhaps by the church because they have that question. And it's okay to, to, to have it. Um, for me, right along with what you said, I heard of him, I inquired of him, then I heard from him. Ooh. So mm. I, for me, it's the having that encounter, him revealing himself to me. And so now, regardless of what I go through, even when I'm angry, even when I'm upset, even when I'm disappointed, I'm like, David, where am I gonna go and you're not there, mm -hmm. right? So I know God exists, but it is because of his grace to give me an encounter. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to you, Corey, on this. And it's similar, it really does piggyback on this whole question, mm -hmm. is how much control does God have over things that happen in the world? I think people really wanna hear that, mm -hmm. or your opinion on it. Well, I mean, can God control everything in the world? Yes, mm -hmm. he could, he, mm -hmm. he is all powerful, but God is not a puppet master. We're not marionettes with That's strings right. in That's the right. sky where That's God right. is just performing this, you know, game that he's playing. Mm -hmm. He loves us so much, right. he created us with a free will with the That's will right. to choose. We're not robots. He didn't make us a creation as, you know, just a toy to be played with. He loves us. He gave us a free will yeah. for us to be able to choose, to have emotions, to experience love, to experience choice. Mm -hmm. And so in that choice, he allows us to say yes, no, make choices. And so um, he has a permissive will in that, in that choice. And so, you know, he ha does have control. He, he ultimately does have control, but, um, you know, there's an, you know, an aspect of us having choice in that. And so our choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we choose, I mean, the original sin with Adam and Eve, that, that choice had a consequence right. That's right. that separated us from That's God. Right. And so sin has consequence, but we can also choose to follow God and he, get, he sent Jesus. And so we have that way back to him. Mm -hmm. And so he provided that way to him. So it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's very hard to understand with our it is. <laughs> human mind. Yeah. It's very hard to understand. We're never gonna fully understand it, but what we can understand is that he has a provided a way mm -hmm. to him, a path to him and he is always there for That's us. Right. That's right. Yes. Amy, what do you have on this one? Um, I think that, you know, Satan is the God of this world and, you know, Corey unpacked that so well. God isn't up there controlling like us, mm -hmm. but we can in our own lives give him as much control as we will that's, allow that's in well our said. lives. That's and well Jesus said, said hey, I'm gonna that's go be with the Father and I'm gonna give you the authority. Mm -hmm. So I think there's an essence of like that Genesis, um, I want you to be fruitful, multiply, multiply, take dominion and subdue the earth. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's in our, that's what we're supposed to do. So um, in, in, mm. in some sense of the word, we're kind of in control of, you know, what's happening, decisions that are made, you know, Right, choices. well, they both, both Corey and Flo talked about choices mm -hmm. in the question prior. 
about how do you know that God is real? So yeah. how does he have control over the world? What's well, the deal? You know, Job said this, God, you can do all things and no plan of yours is thwarted. Amen. Even with all wow. of our choices that we make, mm, yeah. God's plan, Satan tried to destroy Jesus. He took him in the wilderness, fall off the cliff, you're mm -hmm. gonna get saved. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give you bread, no, God's bread. He tries to attack, the world tries to attack. But remember this, whatever you do, whatever choices you make, no plan of God is thwarted. And you know what, wow. love brings freedom. Jesus said to the disciples, hundreds were following him and he said, eat my body, uh, drink my blood. And they didn't understand it was be sacrificial like I'm sacrificial. And he said, they all left. And he went to the 12. They chose. Are you going to choose to leave me too? Right. Love doesn't put its grasp on people. Mm -hmm. It brings us the freedom. Here is what I have for you. Are you going to choose it? The people in Israel, in the desert, they were going around 40 years because they choose golden idols instead of following the God who gave them manna. Instead of uh, following the rock that gave them water, they chose their golden idols and they suffered. Like you said, there's yeah. consequences. Yeah. They suffered for not following but God right. still brought them to the promised land. Yeah, the next right. generation that's went right. in. Such a good question. And remember this, he did say that I will feed the birds of the air. I will clothe the lilies of the field. Mm -hmm. If he cares about them, doesn't he care about you? Yes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Amen. Welcome back. We're so happy that you came back because we're still in conversation it's in the Bible. to see that. Say, the yeah, in the Bible. it's a conversation. But I want to, some days I want to rest. And so I'm going to ask Corey because listen, God said, how important is it for Christians to rest on the Sabbath? Like, honestly, on Sunday, we are not allowed to mow the grass, do laundry, and that comes from George's Serbian upbringing. We rest on the Sabbath. Well, we have to cook, but... Well, I mean, it's quite literally one of the Ten Commandments. Yes, so yeah. um, that's kind of important. Uh, you know, I, I did. Oh, I always got confused with that one, though. I always th I always thought it was like, um, don't skip church. Like for a right. long time, yeah. I thought that that's right. what it meant. Mm, that's good. Um, but I take the Sabbath very seriously. All right, I never skip my nap on Sunday afternoon, okay? So God knows that remembering the Sabbath is holy to me and my house. Um, I don't know, I think this is like one of those commandments like we're, we very easily like skim over like yep. because we we definitely cut the grass and catch up yep. on a lot of work on Sunday. Yep. I will say that. Um, so I, I don't know. Anybody else Can rest? Go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. You know, the Bible says first the natural, then the spiritual. That's right. So God gave a Sabbath rest because there's a spiritual rest. That's that right. Hebrews That's talks right. about. That's right. Hebrews says, Joshua went into the promised land, the rest I promised him. Right. But there's another rest, and Jesus is the rest. So whatever day you take that rest, I God revealed to me a couple years ago, every day you enter Jesus' rest. Mm -hmm. Stop being worried right. today. Stop being confused today. You enter his rest and walk with him work through it. So it's a spiritual rest, not just a natural Physical, on Sunday. Right. She said it's a yeah. 10 commandments and man, right. those commandments haven't changed. That's They're right. all good. Oh, I got it. Uh, but you know, there's also a spiritual rest that we have to enter through Christ. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, in the 10 commandments, we're not going to murder. We're not going to commit adultery, right? We're not going to steal. We're not going to give false witness, but we can so casually just ignore the Sabbath rest and what that means. Mm -hmm. And if you follow, you know, the Jewish custom and tradition, I mean, Saturday is their holy yes. uh, Sabbath right. day. I mean, they don't right. do anything from sun down the night before right. yeah. to, I mean, it's, 
there's something to that. So, you know, our Sabbath, what do we do on Sundays? Because we're work. working. Yeah. yeah. That's a work day for us. Yeah. I mean, it is like, yeah. it is Super Bowl, go time, reach the lost, build disciples, teach, train, equip, empower. Right. So Mondays, you know, we said, hey, Mondays, don't, Call to the me. staff, no <laughs> meetings. This is our day off right. to rest That's and good. rejuvenate. Right. One you, of the best questions, I'm going to go to this last question for you instead of the resting because you don't rest, I know, uh, but you don't. Okay, listen to this. In the Earlier in the show, we said, how much control does God have in our world, right? And then now I wanna ask Flo, yeah. oh, this is, oh, why, how do you make sense of bad things that are happening in the world if God has control of our world? I think first of all, we gotta deal with the reality that we're not gonna make sense out of everything. Okay. And we have to celebrate and accept and receive and honor the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. We need to take time to study the word to show ourselves approved and rightly divided. And if we do mm -hmm. that, we understand that in the word, we are, it is written aforetime for our learning and we begin to understand that we are living in a fallen world. And so there are things that, there are times that we want to blame the devil, we want to blame God. Now, ultimately, I believe everything is, is spiritual. However, you just quoted one of my favorite scriptures, and that is first natural, then spiritual. I have my will, and my will has a lot to do with how I act, how I behave. So here's little Johnny. Little Johnny's a big troublemaker. Little Johnny gets himself in such, he has made decisions and made life choices that have consequences. God forbid, little Johnny gets taken out in gun violence or something like that. Yeah. Now we're grieving and mom and others are saying, God took him, don't worry about it. He's a flower mm -mm. in God's garden. God needed yeah. him, right. God needed him. Right. No, Johnny was taken out prematurely right. because of some life choices and decisions. Yes. And we don't like to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We kind of want to smooth over it and hyper spiritualize mm -hmm. it. You know, you deal with high blood pressure, blood sugar issues. Right. Lord, heal me. Hand me a slice of lemon meringue pie. Yeah. Lord, right. heal me. Give me another slice of ham. Those right. are things, those are decisions that are that have consequences that yep. follow. Is there grace? Yes. But the word also says, don't frustrate the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And there are things that we do that frustrate wow. the grace of God and opens the door mm -hmm. to these things to come in legally. The enemy is a legalist. And he will come in, he does not fight fair. So if you open a door, he will take advantage of that. So there are times that we have, you know, I think we've forgotten the word repent. We say it, you know, like I said, when you've been in this thing so long, we speak Christianese so eloquently and we even know how to do it in different dialects. Right, right. But the fact of the matter is we got to walk this thing out. And in walking it out, I must do it in truth. It's not just the truth will set me free, it's the truth I know. And now now I know I'm in a fallen world. The enemy would love to trip me up. Uh, there are certain things that are triggers. There are certain weaknesses in, in me and I have to um, lean on God, to believe in God so that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. And there are times that we have made decisions and position ourselves that we begin to deal with consequences and have opened ourselves up to the enemy strategies. Right. And I think when, when people write a question like this, they're, they're saying to us, why are these bad things happening in the world. And I can tell you one thing, and that remember King David, he had an illicit affair with Bathsheba and they get a baby. And they say, oh, you shouldn't have that baby because that's blah, blah, blah. And guess what? The baby's dying. And here's David, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And he's falling on the floor and he's praying and he's weeping and everyone's saying, oh, David, look at the king. The baby dies. And guess what David does? washes herself, gets up. I'm going to yeah. serve you anyway. Mm -hmm. So all these things that are happening in our world, mm -hmm. you're still going to serve him anyway. Stay right there. That We're going to wrap this thing up.
What a great show. We're so excited and happy that you're here with us. And you know, we always end with a scripture and today's scripture is found in the Psalms, Psalm 9, 9 and 10. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Twice in that verse, it talks about a refuge. And so I looked up the meaning of the word refuge. Refuge is a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. The Lord is our refuge. And the more that you get to know your creator, your father, your king, the more you can seek him out and ask him to be your shelter. He is always there, but the more that you get to know him, the easier it is to ask him to be your shelter. The more you can feel that shelter around you. When I was a little girl, whenever I was afraid, when there was a storm or I watched a scary show or I heard a scary noise, I would always imagine a dome of angels surrounding my house. And I could feel that shelter. And I just felt so protected because I knew that the Lord was with me. And that shelter is the Lord. And you too can be protected from the shelter, that refuge that is the Lord. Call the number on the screen if you want to know more about the refuge in the Lord. Oh my gosh, that was so good. That was so good. And here's what else is good. This scripture, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. That means hang around with God people. It will change your life. We're so grateful that you tune into Sister to Sister because your viewership and these sisters make me better Kathy. See you next time.